essentially we forget kind of the good things, we remember the bad things. Yes, like that. Yeah. So if somebody wrongs us, for example, we're very good at remembering that, right? Mm. Um, but, but we are very poor at remembering the blessings of God, for example, the good things. And sometimes this is the case with people too, you know, it's that whole idea, I've never seen good from you, right? That you make one mistake and it's like, you, you know, you've never done anything good before. Um, I think that, yes, this is a human weakness, and, and it has to do with also um, focus, what we choose to focus on. Unfortunately, human beings have this, this tendency, this weakness in that we focus on negative things. We focus on what we don't have. Right? What's lacking instead of focusing on what we do have and what's what's there. Um, when it comes to forgiveness, so the question specifically is about forgiveness ultimately. It's about how do we, you're saying that you may forgive but you don't forget. That's what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, if you're still kind to the person. Yeah, especially if the things are happening in, you are in the daily interaction with the person. So like once you are in the contact, you leave, that's it. You forgive, it's over. But like, if yeah. you keep on facing it again and again, so you're not yeah. It's like, is the same, is the same, is, is the same wrong happening again and again, or it's just a reminder of the wrong that happened? No, I mean, it keeps on happening. The, 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 the wrong is happening again and again? Yes. I mean, if you're in a situation, like, you have to face it. Well, first of all, we aren't supposed to be putting ourselves in situations where we're being wronged again and again. That's, that's not supposed to happen. We are supposed to take as much as possible um, action to prevent ourselves from being oppressed. See, the, one of the mistakes that we make too is we think that patience means that you punch me here, let me turn my face, you can punch me on the other side too. Turn the other cheek is not an aesthetic concept. It, we are not to make, patience doesn't mean that you can abuse me. Patience doesn't mean you can walk all over me. No, that's not patience. In fact, it requires patience to take action against abuse. It requires perseverance to take action against oppression. So we're supposed to be acting against these things, not passive. See, the problem is people think that patience means being passive, and that's not what sabr means. Sabr is actually a very active term as well, because in order to be able to pray fajr on time every day, it takes a lot of self. It takes a lot of, but is it an action? It's an action. I'm acting in order to be able to be, to be constant, and to persevere, I need sabr. That's what sabr is. Sabr is not necessarily being passive. In cases where someone is wronging you again and again and again, you need to take active measures to stop that from happening. Depending on the situation, your actions are going to differ. But you aren't just supposed to swallow and be um, passive about abuse or oppression. Whether it's happening to you, or it's happening to your children, or it's happening to your family, or it's happening to people overseas. We aren't supposed to be quiet about oppression. We're not supposed to be quiet about, about injustice. One of the, the lessons that we are taught as, as Muslims, as believers by our Prophet Sallallahu is if you see something wrong, you try to change it, right? Hadith, we all know it. When you see something wrong, try to change it with your hand. And if you can't, then speak with your tongue. So you're using your words, speak out against it. And if you can't, so you can't do either of those things, your hands are tied, you can't, you try. At least you should hate it in your heart. And that is the weakest of faith. This is a hadith. We are told as believers that we are supposed to take action against injustice and against wrong and against oppression. This applies even when, right, it's about me. I'm the one being oppressed or my children, or my family. I should take action, and that's part of my worship. Don't think that you're holier by just being passive. Okay, that's, that's not making you, that's not pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more that you're being passive and you're allowing yourself to be abused. Everything that you have, we said at the beginning, is a, is a gift from Allah. That means my body is a gift. My body is a trust. And I'm letting someone abuse it? I'm letting someone abuse the trust that God gave me? It's an amana, we know that, right? If you weren't feeding your body, you were starving yourself, what would we say? We'd say that you're not taking care of the trust that Allah gave you, so, right? But if you're letting someone use that amana as a punching bag, are you taking care of the trust? Yes or no? You know. So part of your ibadah is to take care of the trust that Allah
Allah gave you. And that includes your body, and that includes your dignity, and these things, and, your, and, and, and the intellect, and, and, your, and your children. Sometimes people think, I'm gonna protect my children by staying in a bad situation. You're not protecting your children by staying in a bad situation. You may be actually harming your children further by staying in that situation because children who are in a bad situation, even if you think that you're protecting them, you may actually be harming them. That that the, 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 the consequences for the rest of their life of being in that situation far outweigh what would happen if you were to leave that situation. This is, and this is, you can read studies and you don't have to take my word for it. You can read about it. You can read studies about psychology and what, what it does to children in an abusive situation. We have to really break out of these, dis, these ideas that we have. That you just, that, that love and patience means under, you know, with, with standing abuse for yourself and your children. You're also going to be asked about your children. What did you do to protect them from that bad situation? Your, support, your children are also a trust. And it's your responsibility to protect them, not only from strangers, but even if it's your own family that's abusing them, right? This is a trust on you that you are going to be asked for. So just don't, don't think that, it, that you're more religious because you're allowing, you're being patient. No, because what, you're, what you are doing is you're enabling injustice. You are enabling oppression. You're helping the oppressor. You know the Prophet ﷺ, he said, help your brother whether he is an oppressor or he is oppressed. And the companions naturally asked, well we understand how we can help our brother if he's oppressed, but how do we help our brother if he's the oppressor? And the Prophet ﷺ said, stop him from oppressing. That's how you're helping your brother. And if that person is your husband or your brother or your family, you help, you're helping that person by not allowing them to be oppressors anymore by not allowing them to oppress you or your children. Okay? So we have to be very careful about that. That if, you know, being patient doesn't mean that you allow someone to wrong you again and again. And forgiveness doesn't mean that either. Because I forgive in my heart, but at the same time, I'm going to help you by stopping you from oppressing. I'm not gonna enable your oppression, even if it's against me or my children. Forgiving and forgetting, in terms of um, how do you help make it easier to forgive? I can give some ideas of how that, to make it easier to forgive others when they wrong you. So having said this about that forgiveness and patience doesn't mean you allow abuse again and again. However, someone may hurt you once. Yes, your, your responsibility is don't let it happen again, but now you have something to forgive. Right? Because it happened once. How do you make it easier to forgive? After you have, again, taken steps to prevent it from happening again to you, but now you need to forgive. One of the ways to make it easier to forgive, one of the ways, is remember and bring to mind your own need for forgiveness. Your own mistakes and your own faults and your own wrongs against others, because all of us, you see, no one in this room that we can see are angels. Inshallah, there's angels here, but we can't see them. The ones we can see are not angels. We're all human beings, and therefore we all make mistakes. If you think that you didn't ever make a mistake, you got a problem, because that's called, that's called serious arrogance and self-deception, guru. We all make mistakes, and believe me, we all are in need of forgiveness. We wrong others all the time. We wrong the creation of Allah all the time. We wrong Allah all the time. When you bring to mind your own faults and your own need for forgiveness, it becomes a lot easier to forgive others. It's the person who thinks that they never made a mistake in their life, and they're just the victim of everybody else's wrongs, who have a lot of trouble forgiving. Right? Right? But if you see your own faults, it becomes a lot easier, man. It humbles you, right? Because you realize, I also, I also hurt others, and I also wrong Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I'm in desperate need of His forgiveness. How am I to withhold forgiveness when I'm in need of forgiveness? Right? 
we ask Allah for forgiveness, but we're not willing to forgive others? How is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember this, Allah deals with us as we deal with others. And this is linked all the time. Those who have mercy towards others, Allah will have mercy towards them. Those who cover the faults of others, Allah will cover their faults. Those who help, you know, if you help your brother or your sister in a, in a time of hardship, Allah will help you in a time of hardship on the Day of Judgment. These are, this is, this is what we're taught by, by, by Allah and His Messenger. Make sure that you're dealing with others in the way that you hope Allah would deal with you. Okay? If you're forgiving of others, then inshallah expect that Allah will be forgiving of you. And inshallah I'll end with this example. That there was a man who had taken, who had given loan, a loan, a loan. And, you know, when usually if somebody gives a loan, I mean, it's like they want to get it back, even with interest. But what he did is he ended up, the person couldn't pay it back, he, he forgave it. When that man came on the Day of Judgment, we're told, Allah says that I am, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more generous than the man. So if the man could forgive, Allah said, okay, because you did that, I'm more generous. So he was forgiven. Because the man forgave that other person for that small thing, which was the loan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah is more generous than his creation, forgave that person. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, is, he will increase whatever you do for the creation. So be very careful about being unforgiving and harsh and not having mercy because expect that that's how Allah will deal with you.